Hey, what's going on, Rock Point Church? Hey, come on, who needs a building to be in the house of the Lord today? I'm going to praise our God. We say... We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he was the victory, yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always made. Come on, who believes that today? Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. Oh my God, still on his soul's way. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is shouting in this place. We won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. Come on, let me see those hands up. Amen. We were the beggars, and now we roll. Now you're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. So let the house of the Lord sing praise. Oh, we were the beggars, and now we royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. And we are forgiven, accepted. Oh, my God. 
shackles off my feet And there's no sound louder than a cop to say Come on, we sing So let the redeemed of the Lord say so Sing of His promises
Church, we're celebrating 20 years of faithfulness. Lift your voice. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. Is what he does. You turn shame into glory. You're the together in one service so hey if you could take a seat for the next few moments the, the the coolest part about this whole thing is that we know that every person here has a story and man we would love to take the time and have every single one of you get up and just share 
kind of how your testimony has intertwined with what God has done through yeah. Rock Point, but unfortunately that would take us like 1,200 hours to do. But what we are going to do is bring up a good friend of mine, the guy that you get to see over here shredding guitar most Sundays, and get to hear just his testimony and all that God has done. So would you give a huge round to my man Rick Landis as he comes over here? <laughs> Hey, so I know not all of you have had the pleasure that I have had of getting to know Rick and his family. So, Rick, why don't you do this? Why don't you just start with who you are, how long you've been around Rock Point, and give us a little bio about you and the family. Okay. Well, my name is Rick Landis, as said, and uh, usually you are, you know, referring to me as the short guy on the left, you know, that plays guitar. Uh, my wife, Ann, and I have been attending Rock Point uh, since the third weekend of the Bible study. So this was like mid-September of 2001, and uh, yeah, so we've been coming for a, quite a while. If you guys don't know, that's like, he's been here since almost week one, and has basically led worship for the entire time, and if you total the amount of hours that this man is at Rock Point, I think it's more than most of our staff combined, so, and he doesn't get paid, he's a pure volunteer, and just an incredible, incredible person, so that's why he's up here. So Rick, <coughs> what is it about Rock Point to you that makes Rock Point Rock Point and has rooted you and your family here for 20 years now? Yeah, uh, I think it's really two things. I think it's uh, service, serving, and then it's been friends. So in serving, when, when Ann and I first started coming here, um, we didn't, we were kind of unsure, we, you know, we'd been, we kind of grew up in the church, uh, but we never really committed. And so when we started coming and really under Bill's guidance, we, we jumped in, and it wasn't like I'm going to tiptoe into uh, ministry. Uh, or, you know, we're going to be part time, and we'll serve. You know, every two weeks, it was headlong dive in, deep end, whatever, whenever. You know, if, if we're just going to be obedient to what God asks us to do and try and be faithful, and so that's what we really, really wanted to do. And so, uh, in serving, what we found was that like God was was focusing us on a purpose. And it was whatever he wanted. So it was, God, we're just willing. And whatever you want us to do, we'll do. And so if it's in children's ministry, okay. If it's playing guitar, great. If it's, you know, being on staff like Ann was multiple times, we'll just be willing. And so we just wanted to be obedient to that. But what we ended up finding was that we found friends that we don't feel are friends anymore. They are family. So whether it's these men and women that I get to serve with and have been serving with for years and years, or it's in the children's department or it's in our small group, we ended up finding people that were more valuable to us than anything else. And it wasn't because they were just good people or that, you know, um, that we shared a common interest. It was because the Lord had placed them in our lives to help build us as men and women. And so these friendships are ones that we'll look back and I get to share an eternity with and we will, with perfect minds at some point in the future, be able to look back and reflect on the things <laughs> like today uh, that have just changed and, and molded us as a family. Man, I love that. And the really cool part for me is when I came here, you know, some three or four years ago to start young adults and had this burden that God had put on her heart like six months before we even got here. And had basically for uh, months and months, which turned into years, really helped build the ministry with us. And so the cool part is we've gotten to see firsthand your and Anne's faithfulness, which is awesome. But I think the other part that's cool is now I'm dropping my daughter off in middle school ministry and, you know, go in to say, hey, and, you know, who's running sound in the back? But your kids. And I go into kids ministry and who's leading worship? It's your kids. And so I think the cool part if you could just speak to it for a moment, right? It started with you and Anne, but it's now kind of moved to your family. This is just kind of what you guys do. What, what has that meant to you and your family? Yeah. Uh, this church has meant so much to me because it's given me the opportunity to, to share my gifts and for people to pour into me to, um, to develop me and certainly my wife. But the thing that I'm most excited about, and this is my Jerry Maguire moment. I can, uh, if you remember the end of that movie, uh, he's, Rod's getting interviewed, and I, I promise I'm not going to cry. Um, this is the legacy that I'm leaving for my kids. This church is, is, 
is so deeply rooted in what we do day to day that it's given us the opportunity to show this and, and, and model this for our kids. And I'm proud to say that our, our kids are, are, are excited about not only coming to church, but wanting to serve at church. And so the idea that we're going to leave here someday and my kids are gonna take over, whether it be at this church or another one, but they're gonna serve the Lord to the highest and to the maximum, uh, that there's nothing, there's no greater joy that I can have. Yeah, well, we can give a round of applause for that, right? <laughs> <clears throat> You promised not to cry, and yep. I feel like you broke that promise now, but <laughs> let, let's make it a little bit lighthearted. What over the last 20 years, I know we said we might not use this question, but what's the most embarrassing moment that you've remembered with Bill that you would love to share with all of them? Just oh an boy. incredible, good, fun moment of Bill. Should, should we alphabetize or? No. Um, no, so uh, early in Rock Points, it's good I get to see Bill. Um, Early in Rock Point's history, we decided to do a sermon series, and they wanted to use me probably because there was nobody else. And so we did the Rick show, and, uh, and I was supposed to be like, you know, uh, Steve Harvey, and I'm interviewing Bill. And so we decided to, um, to do like, well, you know, you guys need to know a little bit about Bill and I. We go way back. In fact, we go back to our time when he was a professional race car driver and a stunt driver. And in the inner, like, can you imagine sitting down to church and then all of a sudden you see your lead pastor and he's in a small electric car and he's going on a ramp, launching it into, like in his front yard. So it was pretty fun to see, you know, a guy, you know, 230, 240 pounds, 6'4", and he's in small little electric car driving off ramps and we're going, we need to take that one more time. I don't think that was good enough. We need a better angle. So we're, you know, forcing him to run, run off launch ramps. So that was pretty fun. I love it. I love it. Hey, so last thing, I know you've kind of uh, alluded to it, but if you had to, uh, how has Rock Point impacted your testimony? Yeah. Um, I, th I, I can't sit up here, stand up here, and, and share and declare my faith with you or with anyone else without mentioning this church. It is, uh, my adult life has been spent here in service to the king. And so this church and you all, I just want to tell you how much it means to me that you've given me the opportunity to be up here and to, and to lead and be a part of the choir and sing to an audience of one. This is not about us singing to you or you singing to us. This is about us lifting our voices to a God who's worthy. It's yeah. good. So thank you. Everybody, can we give Rick Landis one huge round of applause? Uh, hey, here's the reason that we wanted Rick to share his story is because our hope is that if you've been here at Rock Point for 20 minutes or like Rick and his family, you've been here for 20 years. We, we truly hope that this church would be something that would intertwine with your testimony and begin to unlock what it is that God wants to do in and through your life. Amen. Would you guys pray with me real quick before we jump back into a final song? Father. God, we thank you for all that you've done over these last 20 years. Lord, it's such an incredible opportunity to gather, to come together, to remember all it is that you've done. And that we begin to look forward to what the next 20 years would look like. That God, would you right now in this place, in this moment, begin to envision every single person that's here. Every family, every husband, every wife. God, would you begin to show them what it is you want to use their life for and how Rock Point can intertwine with that to begin to create in them a legacy. Father, you are worthy of all our worship. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that everybody said amen and amen. Hey, would you guys stand for one last song of worship? Come on, church, we put our hands together. Put their voice. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power, oh yes I do, still 
there's ants all around you, then you're stuck. Hello? There you go. It's already on. <laughs> I just want to thank Rick for being very kind to me instead of telling embarrassing stories. I got some great ones for him, though. I was prepared. I was prepared to counterpunch, but I won't, I won't do that. That's awesome. But hey, it's, it's awesome to be here, man. Looking out here at, uh, at all this grass, it actually reminds me of the first time... Um, this game of golf was demonstrated for a president. It was for uh, Ulysses S. Grant back in the 1880s, and um, they brought in this, this, this Scotsman, a golfer, and, and he was all excited. He was going to show the president what this game was like, and he, he set the ball up on the tee, and, and then he took this thunderous swing, and he completely chunked it. He missed the ball and dug up a divot and grass and actually sprayed uh, President Grant. He got dirt and grass in his beard. And it's probably because he was nervous, so he's apologized. <clears throat> and he does it again, same result, does it again. He literally, this is a true story, he did it five times. Five times, just swinging crazy and, and just spraying the, the president with dirt and, and grass, in which the president leaned over and quietly said to, to one of his advisors, guys that were with him, he says, well, 
It seems to have a fair amount of exercise, but I fail to see the purpose of the ball. <laughs> and uh, and, and, and that, that's kind of why, why we're here today. Like, wh- why are we here? Why are we here? Because we, we, we don't want to just do things. We don't want to just swing at life. We don't want to just run out there and, and, and be really busy as a church and miss the purpose of the ball, the purpose of what we're about, the purpose of what God called us to. As a matter of fact, that's why we're here today. See, in the Old Testament, when God gathered his people, he gave them these things, these festivals, these feasts to celebrate throughout the year. And, and why? Because he wanted them to stop and celebrate now and again, to stop and, and reflect, to stop and party a little bit, to stop and, 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 and be able to, to think about just how faithful God has been. And the reason he wanted them to stop and look back and celebrate God's faithfulness is to give you the power and the energy and the vision to look forward to keep going. And that's why we're here today. We're here to just take a moment and remember and I'm blown away by, by all the people sitting there because it was not, you know, it seems like it was just yesterday, but a little about 21 years ago, I, I, I basically said I would never plant a church. I would never start a church. I just thought I'm not wired to do that. I have no ability. I, I, I don't have the, 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 the wherewithal, the energy. I, I just didn't think I would do it. And yet, as we started to look at churches, my, my, my career had kind of come to the point that I was talking to churches about becoming a lead pastor, and, and as, as we, we interviewed with them and talked to them, and then they were interested, my, my wife looked at me and says, I don't think we should do that. I think we should start a church. And I kind of thought, she's joking, you know? And I go, why? She goes, because if you took any of these churches, they would all hate you within six months. And I'm like, what? She goes, you need to create your own problems, Bill. And, 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 and I don't know if that was a compliment or not. And I guess that means, welcome, my problems. And uh, no, but it's, and, and so then that's 21 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, the church really, really got started when we prayed in a park that was only a mile and a half that way. This was just desert out here. And, and, and God said, hey, I'm not, worried or calling you because of your ability I'm asking about your availability and that's really what God wants for us he wants us to be available to understand what the purpose of the ball is what's the purpose of us being a church what's our purpose of being a part of a church what's our purpose in this life and that that's really what we came to start rock point all about I mean, with the, the church's name is our purpose, guys, if you haven't figured that out. Rock Point. Rock, a stable foundation, especially in times of trouble. Point is to guide and direct someone where they need to go. You see, we are called to point people to Jesus, the rock. God's called our rock over 300 times in Scripture. And he's, he's asked for our availability, our willingness to, to, to point people to Jesus, to, to, to have a relationship with them. And that's what we committed to over 20 years ago. Five families moved out here. And just said, hey, all right, God, we're available. We're willing. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And, 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 and we just prayed. And we said, we're just willing to do what you want us to do. We're just going to point people to Jesus by loving them like Jesus. And one of the things that we had committed to was to make sure our roots run deep, that we are deeply rooted in the Lord and with one another. And, and, and what we really would say and we continue to say is we wanted to be connected in this community. We wanted to have people see the love we have for one another and the love we have for the community around us. And, and the love, instead of being a church that's very clear about what it's against, we're going to be a church that's very clear about what we're for. And, and, and really, we wanted to have a church that, that we said years from now, years from now, because we hadn't done anything yet. We wanted to have a church that if, if, if this area was to write the history of this area, they couldn't do it honestly without mentioning this church. And the truth is, that's happening. There's a lot of things this church has been involved in. We've been connected. We've been a part of this community. Our roots run deep. They run deep. But what does that mean? What, 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 how do we do that? How do we develop? What are we supposed to do to be a church where our roots run deep? Well, what it really is about is we need to be a people that are deeply rooted in the Word of God. And what I mean by the Word, I mean Jesus, the living Word. Yeah, the written Word describes Him. But we are supposed to be deeply rooted. We need to be rooted in the Word, not in the world. 
We need to be rooted in the word, not in the world. What do I mean by that is we need to do what God's called us to do, and we need to love people the way God's called us to love, and we need to do the things he's asked us to do. And in, in the same thing, we want to point other people to this fully engaged relationship with Jesus, to be really connected to him. In, in John 15, he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You can't do anything unless you're connected to him. So we want people to be rooted in Jesus. In other words, we don't want people that just root for us. We don't want people that just root for God. That's a fan. We don't, we're not here to develop fans. I don't want people rooting for me. I don't even want people rooting for Rock Point. I mean, I want us to root for Rock Point, but really we need to be rooted in God because if, if we're just fans, what happens when you don't like how the season's going? What happens when you don't like the moves, the team? What happens when that? We, 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 we're not trying to build a church that just gets people that root for God, root for our church. You see, that's being a fan. What we need is players followers, fully engaged. That's what this church has always been. That's, that's what we're celebrating here, that God was faithful to do it. We just had to be faithful to do what he said. You see, we don't, we don't need to, to be in the audience. We need to be a church that's in the action. And that's what, that's what we committed to 20 years ago. And that's what my family and I and everybody that's been here long, you know, Rick's been here as long as me pretty much, he probably has more volunteer service hours than me. He sacrificed his hair in the service of this church. <laughs> Should have a moment of silence for Rick's hair. <laughs> All right, I, I said I was going to be nice, but I guess I wasn't. <laughs> so how do you do that? What does it mean to be rooted in the word? I just want to read a, a passage out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, where Paul is praying for a church's spiritual growth. And in the same thing, it applies to us. Starting verse 14, he says this. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. We need roots that run deep. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, this is what we need to understand, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I love that, infinitely more than we might ask or think. You know, the, the number one question people ask me all the time, especially as we got close to this 20th birthday, is did you imagine what we're seeing now? I didn't even know how to answer the question. I guess the best way I can say is no. I didn't, because I think God did infinitely more than I expected. I remember our first Bible study. There was five families. We knew there'd be 22 of us there. And I was hoping there'd at least be 23 of us there. There was 32. And then as we, we, we started, a, we did a little preview service because right after, yeah, something's attacking me. Yeah. Get back, Satan. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, just a few weeks after we started a church, a Bible study, about the time Rick and Ann showed up, uh, then 9-11 um, happened. And what's crazy is what, what, what seems like such a dark time, we went from about 30 people in the Bible study to over 60 because of that. So then we did a preview service in, in October, right around Halloween, and we called it Things That Go Bump in the Life, in Your Life. And it was just a one-time service. We rented the school. We had to actually get other churches to help us, so we had enough people to even have a band, a full band and all that. And we said, this is kind of what our church is going to look like when we start. About 170 people came to that. We said, but we won't be here next week. But if you want, you can come to this Bible study we're doing. It doubled again. And then before we knew it, we had 130 people in our Bible study within six months, and we couldn't fit in the little clubhouse we were using, so we had to do church. So we started 20 years ago, on February 10th, at Higley High School. We had 333 people come. That was more than I thought. And then with my brilliant leadership and preaching, we grew that to 199 over the next few weeks. 199, that's the lowest we've ever had on a, on a, on a weekend. 
we couldn't find someone to do pastor math and find one other person so we could say there was always at least 200 people? Uh, oh, well, that's what it is. But as you just keep going on and on, we had these moments where we were in the church school forever. Then we finally got, got to have our first building, and we thought, this is awesome. It's amazing. And in no time, and half the time we were in the school, we grew out of that. And now we have our new campus, which is amazing. And guess what? We're already growing out of that. We, we need to knock those walls down and expand the room there. You wouldn't understand that if you came. It's just you Sunday crowd that won't go to Saturday, even though I keep asking you to. See, it's Saturday. It wasn't so bad to get here, was it? <laughs> Got to always share vision. But our roots need to run deep. And you know what? We've had a lot of these moments. We've, we've, we've connected in our community when first and foremost, our roots got to run deep in the word, in who is Jesus, finding our identity in him, growing in his love, finding out how wide and deep and real his love is. And the Bible says that opens up our ability to love others, to be the church the way we're supposed to be. And to be able to point others to Jesus by loving them the way Jesus loves us. That's been the mission. That's the purpose of the ball. We never wanted to be a church that's just busy. We never wanted to be a church that just does things just to do them. We don't want all this activity, but no effectiveness. We want to be a church where the roots run deep. You know, we've had times where we've connected to the town in deep ways. In the town of Queen Creek, we have a high school next to us we have roots with. We've, we've connected in so many ways. And what I'm thankful for is we've had thousands upon thousands of people become fully engaged followers of Jesus, not just fans. We've also lost a lot of fans along the way. There's been tough moments along the way. As you look back, you've got to celebrate God's faithfulness, not just for the fun times and the good times, but for the tough times. We've survived. We've survived uh, uh, this, this, this pandemic where there was a moment in there that it, I didn't think anybody was a fan of Rock Point anymore. I thought all of us were mad. I, I, I was mad. Everyone's mad. We all just walked around mad for a while. Most of us has come back down off of that. Some of you still look like you walk around mad all the time. <laughs> but we've gone through the bit ups and downs. You know what I never imagined what happened? That more than once there's been death threats against me in the history of this church. That I didn't expect. I mean, I should have looked in a mirror and know my personality. I shouldn't be surprised. But still... But God has been faithful as long as we stay available, as long as we stay rooted in the word, not in the world, not in trying to just build something in our own strength, our own power to fit our own preferences, but to just be available to what God wants to do. And that's what we're here to celebrate. That's what I'm so thankful for. Man, I just remember I hoped there was enough people to come back that so we could pay the rent for the Bible study room we were using. And here we are today, 20 years later. That's amazing. But we need to stay rooted. And you know what it reminds me of? Is that I was on a road trip a couple years ago with the family. We went through the giant redwood forest in Northern California there. And, and you're just blown away. These trees are huge and very old. And, and you know what's crazy about their root system? Yeah, their roots go deep. But, but they are so big, I don't know if they can get deep enough. They're not like a palm tree that just does one root straight down so it can get water. It's, 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 they don't blow over. They live for so long because they can survive storms because their roots don't just go down deep. You know what else their roots do? They go out, and they wrap around each other. So if you try to knock down one redwood tree, you got other redwood trees actually holding it up. See, that's what community is supposed to be. Your roots go deep and they intertwine. They're interdependent. And that's what helps you survive storms. If you got one just sitting out by its lonesome, there's going to be a storm strong enough that's going to knock it over. But you get a whole forest of these trees, and they last. When I think about what I imagine and what I see and what I'm so thankful, looking back and celebrating like God asked us to do, to look at his faithfulness, is the fact that as we have stayed rooted in him, we have built strong roots around each other. That's what Rick was saying. And when you experience that, it's very different than just being a fan. 
So I'd encourage you, because I'm a preacher, this is what I do, even if we celebrate and look back, some of you need to ask yourself, am I a fan of Jesus? Am I a fan of Rock Point? Or are you an actual connected follower that is letting your roots run deep in the word, but also getting interdependent, connecting to others? Because that is what the ball is. And that's what we've focused on for 20 years, and as long as I'm leader, we're going to continue to focus on because that's what the church is about. It's about Jesus. It's not about me. At some point, if Jesus doesn't come back, this church is going to keep going. And I hope the next leader is a better leader than me. I hope it just goes on to even greater things than where we've ever been. Because we're not done yet. We're not done yet, you know, because God's not done yet. And the last thing I want to share, and we're going to sing, is this. When I talk about that roots running deep and watching people stop being fans and become real faithful followers, one of the greatest moments of my <laughs> remembrance the last 20 years happened really early on. You see, my mom started coming to our church when I got back. Now, she grew up in church and then walked away. My dad got really involved, but my mom was always just a fan of God's, a fan. She would come. She didn't have a problem with it. She believed in him, and she would show up. Well, she started coming all the time when I started church. You know why? Because she was a fan of God, but she was a uber fan of me. I had that mom that when I was in high school, I was actually embarrassed because she, I couldn't do anything wrong. She loved me too much almost. It's like it was creepy. It was like... That, Mom, that's, that's, you're going to get me beat up. You love me so much, and you brag about me so much. So she showed up, and I knew that, and I didn't want that. I mean, she, she would show up because she was just a fan of me, but that was terrible. But over that first year, God was faithful. And my mom was the favorite baptism I ever did because she stopped being a fan and saw Jesus. And I got to baptize her before she died. And she became a real follower of Christ. And you know what, isn't that what you want for your family, for your friends, for this community? Then just be available. Be like what Rick said, just go all in. Don't make your relationship with God and church just one of the activities of your life. Don't just let it be the ball on the tee that you're swinging all around and knocking up dirt and looking at it, but go for it. Go for it. Let your roots run deep. We're going to give away some, some, some plants because we always do something like this that say roots run deep on it to remind you of that. To say, I'm going to take that next step. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get involved. And because you know what? As we look back, as God called people to do at festivals, as we take this moment to celebrate, as we take this moment to look back, it's not meant to go, oh, we did it. We're done. Woo, we made it 20 years. See you later. It's no, we look back in order to confidently go forward. You look back and say, wow, that was scary. That didn't make any sense. But here we are. We look back, there was moments I didn't think this was going to work, and here we are. You look back and you go, is this ever going to move forward? And here we are. And you know what? If we know that all through that time, God was faithful, and here we are, here we are, here, well then, there will be. There will be. We'll be there where God wants us to be. And you know why? Because he's not done yet. God's not done yet. He hasn't said it's done yet. He's not done with you. He's not done with us. He's not done in this world. And as long as he's not done yet, guess what? We're not done yet. Amen? Well, let's stand up and let's sing about that. Sing about how we're not done yet. Amen. Seen. No ear has ever heard 
no one could ever comprehend. No. Your word will be enough. Your promise we will trust. The greater things are still ahead. You're not done yet. Amen. You're not done yet. God in my secret, God in my dream, you put a song in my soul. God in the work. God, I believe in you to the impossible. You're not done yet. No eyes ever seen, no earrings ever heard, no one could ever comprehend. Your word will be enough, your promise we will trust. Still ahead, you're not done yet. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. Oh my God, it's up to something. You're up to something right now. See it. You're doing a new thing right now. God, let your glory come down. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Come on. Yes, you're up to something right now. You're doing a new thing right now. God, let your glory come down. You're moving mountains right now And you're breaking chains right now, right now. So God let your glory come down Don't hold back, don't hold back No eyes ever seen, no earrings ever heard No one could ever comprehend Your word will be enough, your promise we will trust, the greater things are still ahead, you're not done yet, you're not done yet. our hope. God has been faithful for the last 20 years and we're believing in His faithfulness for the future. Amen. Well, hey, we're actually not done yet. We have a surprise here. So if Bill and Carrie are around, we actually need you to come to the front. So Bill's over there. Is Carrie over there too? Carrie! We need Carrie up here. Hey, everyone give Carrie a clap. It's my mother-in-law. She's lovely. Take it away, Dave. Hey, Bill. How are you doing? I was not made aware of this moment, so I don't know what's about to happen. Well, you know it's meaningful if I'm on stage, yeah, right? Dave so, <laughs> yes, I am Dave Sutherland, executive pastor of Rock Point Church, if you don't know that. <laughs> Carrie, come on up. <laughs> She's done a lot of walking already today. Yeah, yeah, stand by your wife. Yes, yes. Well, celebrating 20 years and honoring what God's here done here at Rock Point Church, we could not do that without celebrating and thanking Bill and Carrie for planting this church. Yes, it was Carrie's idea. For sure. But that moment that you had, Bill, where you screamed out, I'm going to plant a church. Those moments, those are God moments. I thank you for the sacrifice that you guys have made, the ups, the downs, the commitment that you've had to each and every one of us. But 
You talked about re roots running deep and wide and intertwining. Your guys' roots have intertwined with all of them and all of us. As a very small token and a symbol of that is that plant, the roots of that plant. It's a legacy tree that you guys can plant in your yard. If you need, Bug can have the whole facilities team come over and plant it for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. The other thing is, we got you this. No cash. It's a plaque. I'll have them show it to you, but I need to read it first. So Bill and Carrie Bush, because of your dedication and faithfulness to God's call, thousands of people who walked through the doors of Rock Point Church, given their lives to Christ, and been baptized. That's worth a clap. Thank you for planting your roots in Queen Creek and changing the trajectory of the community. The impact you guys have made, you will have no idea. It's immeasurable. We were trying to come up with numbers that we could put on that. Words and numbers cannot describe the impact that you've made on this community and this church. Thank you. We also, yeah, if you guys want to say something, if think about it, because uh, I couldn't come up with something that quick. So we do have uh, succulent plants for every family here. I don't know how many there are, but they said there's enough for every family. They're off to the side here, so when this celebration is over, uh, make your way down uh, at some point and grab a plant. But did you guys want to say anything? You good? You said what needs to be said? You don't want to cry? Good? Uh, Let's have, let's first do our, our usual chant. We are. Rock we are. Rock we are. Rock One last cheer for Bill and Carrie.